as powerful and as beautiful as it was to witness the Quran coming upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's still just as miraculous and as majestic today as it was then. And that's why it is the timeless miracle. It's the miracle that stays with us even though we never got to accompany him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what was it like when you were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there were other miracles that were taking place as well? And was there a benefit to those miracles as they happened in front of your eyes? So I want to focus on two categories of miracles that you would have witnessed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regularly. And one of them was the miracle of trees and stones that would greet him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that clearly had an attachment to him, meaning even nature had an attachment to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that the student of knowledge, the scholar, has everyone and everything making dua for them, even the animals, even the fish in the sea, even the environment makes dua for the student of knowledge and the scholar because they benefit everything around them. And with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most blessed of those who were given knowledge because he received knowledge directly from the heavens Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, when the Prophet ﷺ was growing up and before he received revelation, he used to have these miracles take place with him, the trees that would extend their branches, the stones that would say salam to him, but the Prophet ﷺ would ignore them because he didn't know what to make of them وسلم, at that point in his life. However, after the age of 40, Jabir ibn Samara radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, the Prophet ﷺ said, I recognize the stone in Mecca, which used to say salam to me before my advent as a prophet, and I still recognize that stone even now. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, when we would go out in Mecca, even in the early days of the prophethood of the Prophet wasallam, the trees and the rocks as we pass them by would say, As-salamu alayka, ya Rasulullah. Peace be unto you, O Messenger of Allah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that one time we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he had this handful of small stones in his hand. And as the stones were in his hand, they began to do tasbih in his hand. They began to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it was common to see nature showering blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they felt blessed by his presence. And the most prominent story is one that was witnessed by numerous companions. And I want you to imagine the scene. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to stand by a tree on the day of Friday. And he used to lean on that tree when he would give the khutbah. And then one of the women of the Ansar said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, should we make a minbar for you? Should we make a pulpit for you? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In shi'tum, if you wish, then go ahead and do so. So we built a pulpit, a minbar for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the minbar to start giving the Jum'ah khutbah from there, to start giving the sermon from there, they said that the date palm tree started to cry like a child. Some of the Sahaba, they described the crying of that tree like a pregnant she camel about to give birth. And some of them said it was moaning like a baby. Can you imagine sitting there and you're looking at a tree crying and the Prophet Sallallahu what does he do? He descends from his manbar. He goes to the tree Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he starts to comfort the tree Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. And just like if you were comforting a child, the crying would start to calm down until the crying stops or you hope that the crying stops. The Prophet Sallallahu was comforting the tree and all of the Sahaba are looking at the Prophet Sallallahu and they're thinking to themselves, what is going on? SubhanAllah, this is incredible. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, Tabki ala ma kana tasma'u min al-dhikr. That the tree is crying because it's missing what it used to hear of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because the Prophet Sallallahu had moved to the minbar, the tree was saddened that it would no longer have the Prophet Sallallahu leaning upon it and speaking under it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's one category of miracles that you would witness and you would have witnessed that particular miracle because it was the day of Jum'ah when the people were gathered. Then you have another category of miracles and that was the blessing that his blessed hands used to produce Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what that looked like was that he could either put his hands on something that produced nothing and it would start to produce, or the Prophet Sallallahu would put his hands on a small quantity of things and it would become a large quantity. So you have the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu putting his hands 
on the udders of an animal that doesn't give milk and then that animal starts to flow with milk. Like in the case of Umm Abad, the story of Umm Abad radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then you have all these narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with food, small quantities of food and small quantities of water. You have a narration from Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who says that we were 130 people with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu said, do any of you have any food with you? And so each one of them, you know, came forth and all they had was just a small amount of food and it was all mixed together. Then the Prophet Sallallahu saw this man and he had some sheep. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, are you selling these sheep or are you giving them away? He said, no, I'm selling these sheep. So the Prophet Sallallahu bought one of the sheep and Abd rahman says that the Prophet Sallallahu cooked the sheep himself. And then the Prophet Sallallahu as he cooked the sheep alayhi salatu wasalam, he started to cut from that sheep and he started to serve the people. And he said he served from his own hand sallallahu alayhi wasallam 130 people. And not a single one of us had any food that was missing. And he said we even were able to stow some of it away as extra for our families. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was able to turn one dish into two dishes. He was able to turn two dishes into 200 dishes. And there are numerous narrations of that sort. And you have the narration that we already covered, for example, of the laban, the yogurt drink that the Prophet ﷺ served to Abu Huraira and some of Ahl al-Sufa, some of the poor people in the masjid. And it never runs out because it's from the hands of the Prophet ﷺ. And you have the narration of over a thousand people eating from one pot in Khandaq, in the trench that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was able to extract the Barakah from. You have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking a small pot of water Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and pouring the water through his hands and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calling the Sahaba to him as the small amount of water comes through his fingers Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and all of them were able to do wudu, all of them were able to drink and all of them were even able to take enough water to give to their animals, SubhanAllah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam produces barakah, produces blessing in quantity. And that's something that the ulama point to, the scholars point to. They say, SubhanAllah, even the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu were mercy. Even in his miracle was a rahmah. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave you more than you expected, whether it was in terms of worldly things or if it was in terms of things regarding the hereafter. <laughs> صلوا عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم